Okay, so we've learned a lot about compound and simple interest and uh, so far things have not been that difficult but they can make it quite complex by changing things along the way. Now there's mainly two changes that they can make. One change is changing interest. Okay, so for example you invest money and halfway through your investment the investment rate, the interest rate changes. So changing the interest rate is one thing that can change. Um, and the other thing that can change is uh, additional deposits. Okay, so you've invested some money and 10 years down the line you deposit a bit more into that savings account or um, withdrawing. You might withdraw some of the savings along the way and you would still like to know how much uh, would be in the account. Okay, so these are the two main changes that I'm going to look at and I'm only going to look at theoretically at this point. So just trying to get formulas to uh, assist me in doing the questions when I come to the questions. Okay, so what do I mean by formulas? Well, let's take this first one. When we are changing the interest along the way, let's say there's some change happening here and some change happening there. Okay. Then we know that this is our timeline and um, the, the best way to these, do these questions is simply to draw a timeline. Okay, We want the future value, maybe we ever, we're even asked the past value, it doesn't matter, draw a timeline. Okay, So the first thing that we'll do in this timeline is to put down our present value and put down our future value depending on what is given. Then put down the rest of the information. So I will have some sort of interest rate here. Let's call it interest rate 1 on this period. So for the first whatever years or whatever we ha get a certain interest rate. Again remember it's important we are using the effective interest rate. So you're either using the effective interest rate per term or per year okay then here we'll use the second one this will be uh, it's changing for some or other reason and then we have the final investment uh, or interest rate here at the end and there might be a hundred of these it doesn't matter everything stays the same okay so if we are using effective interest rates here all we need to know now is how long how many months or years or whatever effective means has passed so we'll have an N1 okay and then here we'll have N2 now N2 depends we start counting from here so one two three four five six whatever um, however many time periods are in between here and then N3 is now the number of time periods in this third uh, number or third group of interests added okay so how am I going to get the interest at this point okay well not the interest the, the the value at this point well at this point it is simply earning I1 for a number of time periods okay so the value here let's call that one P1 would be by taking my initial investment and adding compound interest for this number of time periods. Now we said that is N1. Okay. Now I have a new amount as my principal or my past value and I will use this amount to calculate the value at N2. Okay. So this amount will simply be, we'll call that one the value uh, or the present value after at the second time interval that one will take P1 the value at the beginning of this time interval P1 we add the interest for the number of time periods that we are considering here and that would be N2 okay but P1 is already equal to that so P1 can just be replaced by this sorry that was I1 okay so plus I1 to the power of N2 sorry not N2 N1 and 1 plus I2 to the power of N2 
and I think you might just see where all this is going. So the future value, the value at the end of the time period, will take this, the present value at N2, which we said was P2. We'll take P2, and we'll multiply P2 with the, with the interest rate for the number of periods in this last term. And there are three. We're using N3 and my interest rate at that during that time my effective interest rate remember we're using effective interest rate okay and but we also have a different way of writing p2 we can substitute p2 with this intense formula but that just brings me to my end if i had three changes in my or two changes in my interest rate an interest rate in a one term a different interest rate and another term and finally another different interest rate I simply take my principal multiply it with the interest rate in the first term to the power of the number of terms in that time period the interest rate in the second term multiplied by the number of terms in that second period and again my third interest rate and the number of time periods during that time. Now this can go on. I can have as many changes as I want to every time. I'll just multiply with this similar bracket. What bracket do I mean? This one plus I, whatever it is, let's call it footnote K and the number of time periods in that uh, time period. <laughs> okay, so there we go. This is what I'll do. This is intense formula, but I'm sure it's quite easily understood. And that is what I will use if during this time period my interest rate changes at various times. Now secondly, what do I do if instead of my interest rate changing, I have some withdrawals or um, extra deposits and let's work with this three. Let's say we invest in P here, okay, and then we're s withdrawing um, something here let's call it uh, withdrawal W is withdrawal and then here we have another deposit so we have a deposit there and we want to find out what is the future value okay now even though these time periods look even they don't have to be this can be three years and this can be after five years and this can be after 20 years okay so uh, the, the timeline doesn't have to necessarily look on scale but that's just an example I want to keep it theoretical we want to know what is the future value so this time what would be better is to treat these three as three separate investments okay even though that's a negative a withdrawal I'll just use it as a negative investment and this is what I mean so what we're going to do is we're going to look at P and say, well, let's assume we only had P, these, however long this is, let's call that N time periods, okay? And what would I have had if I just took P? What would the future value have been if there was no withdrawals and no deposits, okay? It would have simply been my interest rate there, okay? That would, would have been the normal equation, but there was a withdrawal, Okay, so let's say this was um, in one number of time periods. So this might be something like 20 years and N3 might be something like three years. So three years into this whole thing, we made a withdrawal. So now we're going to only look at this part and s look at that. And we say, okay, let's kind of consider a negative investment if there is something like that. And ask the question is, if I invested negative W, how much would negative W be worth at the end of this time period? Okay, so again, that would be W times 1 plus I, but what would be the, the number of time periods? Well, it's not 20 or it's not this whole time period because it's less. Okay. Some months have elapsed or some years or some time periods have passed. So in this case, it's three. 
so we can probably calculate if there was 20 and three time periods have elapsed then there's 17 left so how did we get 17 we took our original time period minus the number of time periods that has elapsed and we called it n1 now since this was a withdrawal we are subtracting it now n2 is now the number of time periods passing till we have our deposit that's n2 okay and the same thing how many months or years or time periods are re uh, remaining well it depends it let's say this was uh, after 12 years okay then there would have been eight periods remaining how did we get that eight we took 20 minus the 12 so for our final deposit we are only assuming we deposited even in a completely different bank account we just add up everything in the end 1 plus i to the power of n that's the total time period minus the number of time periods that has elapsed okay why because this numer oh sorry this exponent represents the number of time periods during which we got this again effective interest rate Okay, and that is the number of time periods remaining and there we go this is a is, is another formula you can see it looks intense but I can actually assure you as soon as I'm going to do some examples on these two you're gonna think oh that's not so bad so let's get right into that